I picked a game for my endless Steam library at random with my hat. Round two. Time for another hat game. <laughs> what do we got? Rollerdrome. Rollerdrome was a game that was released last year and was created by Roll7 and published by Private Division. The game has 21 achievements, mostly having you complete in-game challenges for a 100%, other than that, a few miscellaneous ones too. According to the website Completionist.me, it takes on average 13 to 15 hours to complete. Now let's get started, shall we? Yeah. So Rollerdrome is all like... <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. In a world where competitors compete in a series of gauntlets, I don't really get it, but for some reason the sport of uh, roller roaming seems insane. And I don't watch no sports, but if this was a real sport, I think it'd be time for me to resubscribe to cable. The game starts off teaching you the controls. Yeah, those are some good graphics. Yeah, that's... Those are definitely some good graphics. Is the gameplay as good as the graphics? Ooh. Okay, now this is epic. Blasting through the tutorial, we are granted a really fast achievement. Oh, look at that. Tutorial done. And after, we are put right into the game's small storyline, which has us thrown into this neat little first person section. First person? These are short and concise and only happen once in a blue moon. Ooh, damn, that was a smooth transition. Ain't no way is this a game I haven't played before. Swiftly, we put down every house player in the prologue level and are granted a second achievement. Headshot! Another achievement. If you haven't already noticed, this game's objective is to go level to level, eliminating every house combatant enemy. There is some catches, of course, though, as you may have noticed a wide resemblance to Tony Hawk. The game also features a combo slash scoring system, too. You can up your combo and score by doing tricks, eliminating enemies, and collecting combo tokens. Some other interesting key factors to the gameplay include not having a manual reload system. Instead, you have to do tricks in order to get ammo back, and also max pain style bullet time after you perfect dodge an attack. Bullet time grants you bonus damage, and of course, gives you more time to think as well, so it's a rather crucial element to gameplay later on. One last thing that this game includes are a list of challenges for you to do for each level. This type of thing is an achievement hunter's dream. After completing the second level, we unlock another weapon. Whoa! I didn't know there was more than one gun in this game. The shotgun has a very cool mechanic where you can turn your bullets into slugs with good timing, giving them better accuracy and more damage. My favorite maps were easily the outdoor snow levels because... Windows. Oh, sick. But also being able to jump island to island was a really fun touch. Beating the standard campaign levels was really easy. <laughs> but as we progressed, the challenges started to become more and more obscure, and we were completing less and less. Level 4 introduced the final tutorial the game has to offer, showing me how to acid drop. <laughs> a situational movement tech that allowed you to essentially fast fall or traverse over ramps instead of getting air. And with that, we gained the achievement for beating every tutorial. Level 4 introduces one of the most painful enemies the game has to offer. He's got a shield! Anytime you want to hurt this guy, you have to stagger him first, then you can actually damage him. Basically, one of the bullet spongy enemies. The only other problem is, they come in such a large quantity and they're so hyper aggressive. Also, they throw mines all over the place that really hurt. Oh, that guy just got his ankles broken. <laughs> we beat level four. Yes! And are handed the grenade launcher. Oh, grenade launcher. This game's progression is locked behind the challenges, and even though this feature can be turned off in the menus, I left it on because I need to do it either way. Oh, there's a secret little spot. Some of these challenges were interchangeable between levels. Collecting five combo tokens, Getting a full combo and getting a pretty high score were all challenges that you needed to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, an achievement pop for getting a full combo here. Oh, I did get it. Nice. Kill streak. Some of the other challenges included were performing a different trick while nice, grabbing the trick it. token, which can be anywhere on each level, and decimating enemies in different ways too, like having to kill three grunts in reflex time. I ended up doing all of Chapter 1's challenges, so here were some of the more interesting ones. I had to wall ride the ski lift on the snow level. I'm gonna wall ride the ski lift real quick. Oh, no I'm not. <laughs> I'm just gonna fall to my death. There we go. Eliminating the sniper on top of this column with a slug shot from above was another oddly specific one that I did. And a speedrun one for level 4, which required me to finish in less than 2 minutes and 35 seconds. I think I got it that time. 
Damn, oh, that was close. Riding through these challenges, we also obtained the achievement for beating a level damage list, because I'm apparently just too good. Oh, untouchable. And getting a triple kill on accident with a single grenade was another one. Oh, I got another achievement. We finally start the quarterfinals, and we get another progression-based achievement. We jump back into the main campaign progression, and we are introduced to another crazy enemy. Essentially the same as the sniper enemy, but it's a big blue heckin' laser that follows you. Oh my god! The only other difference is that he's way tankier and teleports away after one attack, making you chase him everywhere. Oh my god, that's a robot! The next level over also introduces the giant mech enemies. They are the true bullet sponges of the game, as you may expect requiring at least three grenades from the grenade launcher to kill. The Iger Resort was the last level in the quarters, and the layout of this level is still one of my favorites. As I said before with the winter levels, you go island to island so it's already fun, but you can also smash through these windows and go down here. That was fun. Oh, and if you feel like it, you can go up here too. After eliminating my last enemies on this level, we are told to proceed to the next zone for the first time, which definitely confused me. Oh, oh it's a boss. I no bosses were in this game. Why does he look like a ramp? I'm about to find out. Oh, that's so cool. What the hell? Aha, you're done already. We've reached past the halfway point, and the game gives us the final weapon for the beginning of the semis, which getting to the semis was also an achievement. Oh. The fourth and final weapon, the Z11, was this game's hyper-accurate sniper weapon. Easily what I consider to be the best weapon, as it one-shots almost any and every enemy, except the mechs of course. On top of this, the final enemy was introduced this level too. The enemy responsible for most of my deaths during my playthrough. Oh, T-posing prick. Oh my god, I'm dead. Oh, it's always the T-posing Chad. The Jetpack Acid Spitting Man. And yes, that, that's his real name. After this, it was pretty much smooth sailing to the finish line. And I gained the achievement for getting 50% of the main campaign's challenges done by accident. We are now on to the final level of the base campaign. Reach the final. Of course, another achievement for making it here. Next zone must be a boss. Spider Tank Mac. Mach 2. The second version of the spider tank was quite a lot harder than the first, as he doesn't give you free reign to just shoot him down. The bot has a shield this time, so while he and all the enemies in the arena are mowing you down, snipe. You have to open up his shields by eliminating the basic enemies. This got really tough near the end, as he spawned a plethora of annoying enemies for you to deal with. No! I got newt! No! Why? Hey. Yes! My guy kind of went flying off screen there, but... Finally. What the hell? I think I just spawned a mosquito. Get out of here, man. I just beat the campaign. After winning... More confusion set in as what I thought was me beating the game turned into more first person dialogue. Kara, this is Clarence. Let me be the first to say congratulations. It takes a lot to be a champion, and I'll admit I underestimated you. Let's find some time to talk about your future. I think it can be beneficial to both of us. Myself and the executives are having a little party upstairs to celebrate the good news. Why don't you come and join us? There it is! The trophy from my thumbnails! They, they gave it to me. Okay, now it's over. Just kidding. Uber mode was Down unlocked. for blood, unlocked. All house players now appear at all stages of the con. That's... It's the same campaign, but like, way harder. The Out for Blood mode, as I said, was the exact same as the campaign levels, but it doubled the enemies, sometimes felt like tripled, and they also stuck the more dangerous enemies in the earlier levels. This was, oh, really tough, unsurprisingly, and honestly made me into a different beast altogether. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah! I finally beat the first level! And it's, it's literally an achievement to beat, a, beat one level. Alright, now it's time to actually try. 
There it is, boys. This is the try mode. This is the ultimate gaming form. The ultimate posture. I'm losing. No. No. We must try again. Here I come. After quite a worrying start with me taking around an hour to beat the first couple of levels, it was actually what was needed to wake me up because I was managing to beat level after level after level first try every time. We make it pretty far without mistakes. No, stupid shield guy. Oh, and we got the achievement for collateraling two enemies with one Z11 shot too. Ooh, double kill. Uh, I got a collateral for an achievement. Eventually, we get to the first spider tank boss again. This time, he's a lot like the first campaign's second boss. Loads of enemies and a thick shield to protect them. Honestly, even though there was even more enemies than last time, there was no stress. And I managed to first try the first boss, no problem, which felt pretty good. Easy. It's that easy. Let's rocks and rolls. Now I was unstoppable, and the rest of the game besides the finals was a wrap. Damn! Look at that! Speedrun McGee, again. Now for the final boss, Spider Tank Mark II. Oh jeez. Ow! He was significantly harder. Specifically, the last phase is extremely overwhelming with attacks and enemies. It was hard to even think. Oh shoot. Oh my god. Go! Oh! oh my god, I'm... Oh, damn. I didn't think I'd die. This boss was rough. Very fitting for a final boss of an already hard game. Oh, holy crap. Chill, crap, man. Oh, my God. Here we go. Let's finish him. Oh, got him. Let's freaking go. Yes. Okay. All in, a day, all in a day's week. All in a day's work. Whatever. We got it done. We beat the Out for Blood campaign for that thick achievement, but we are far from done. I decided now would be as good time as any to grab some cleanup achievements before 100%ing all of the challenges. Starting with the achievement Slugger, which required me to beat a level using only slugs. Of course, this required no timing mistakes. No! The one time I didn't use slugs! I messed up right at the end of this level, but that's okay because I was trying to be efficient on this level as there was a challenge to beat it using only the shotgun. I picked an easier level to do this on and it was no problem. Okay, that should have been it, right? Ooh, slugger. Yeah, I got it. Now it was off to perform every trick and grind during one level. Monkey! These were two separate achievements that I did during one easy playthrough of level one. Backbreaker. Boom! Every trick in the book. Was that the last one I needed? Yeah, the, the normal one was the last one I needed. There was another extra achievement to get, but I decided to wait until I got to the stage to get it. So anyways, we started grinding challenges. Once again, here are more of the interesting challenges I had to get. I had to kill a laser beam enemy with a full clip of pistol ammo, which required perfect timing, as the pistols didn't do much damage to them. Yeah! Another challenge had me damage the same laser enemy, but with two different weapons before they teleported. Ah, uh, damn. This was harder than it sounds, because once you stop attacking for a fraction of a second, they teleport. The strategy here was to shoot a grenade first, wait till it gets close to impact, and then quickly fire a pistol shot. Yep, easy. Beating the Iger Resort stage without falling out of bounds was another challenge I had to be really careful with. Nice! We managed to do that one and finish it with a full combo in my first attempt, which was nice. Oh. <laughs> okay, since now I'm on that level, we can get that other achievement. <gasps> he hit that? This one was for beating the Spider Tank Mark 1, luckily, without taking any damage. It just shot me anyways! Again, it's harder than it sounds. The boss included a lot of enemies in this game that have jankiness in their attacks, allowing them to deal even 1% of damage to your health bar. 
This for sure was my dumbest attempt yet, as I take a tiny bit of damage here, don't notice it, then I see my screen flash red, check my health bar only to see it's full. So I think it's damageless and complete the run, and it ended up shocking me a bit. Did I get him? Did it count? Did it count? Please tell me it counted. He did... He hit me, but he did zero damage. That should still count. It's okay though, cause only one attempt more and we got him. Did I get it? It better pop this time, it better pop. Please, please, please. Yes! Oh my god, yes. Again, back to the interesting challenges. Eliminating a ground level house player while grinding on the top level of this map was pretty cool. And eliminating a warhead using the grenade launcher before touching the floor of this level was also cool. No! This one actually required a similar strategy as one of them prior. To shoot the grenade, slow down time and get him low enough for the grenade to finish him off before he puts his shield up. Yes! Got it. So we have nothing but the hardest stuff left. I was right. For the base campaign, we only had the final level left, but this level had some difficult challenges. Specifically this one. In order to get nearly 3 million score, we need to manage to full combo this level in a timely fashion, as getting a good time also rewards you with bonus points. No! Oh, stupid, dude. Is that the last guy? Got it. That's the time, but where's the combo? Oh! So we managed to pull a good enough time for the time challenge, and we managed to earn a full combo, yet we're still short of the 2.8 million required for the challenge. I just had to pray once the level ended, the time bonus was enough. Easy clap! <sighs> oh! I beat the best- the best score! Oh, 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 oh. Every challenge from the base campaign was complete, and you're probably wondering, what are the Out for Blood challenges like? Well, actually, they're rather simple. Essentially, you just want to be good at this game. If you full combo a level, you'll probably get the score, and if you're good enough to full combo a level, there's a big chance you'll get the time too. Well, actually, it was that simple. Level after level, S rank after S rank. We were on track to becoming an unstoppable force for this achievement. That's why it was a surprise when I got to the level Barbican Arena. Oh, I actually messed up the time. 240 was actually a pretty difficult time to achieve on this level as there were so many bullet spongy enemies on this stage. I died? Come on. I'm not going to lie. After a good amount of attempts, I started to tilt. So I decided it was in my best interest to keep my good momentum and move on. And again, we own. Okay, was that enough? Again, first try, or was that first try? I'm pretty sure that was first try. But now that I got an even better momentum going for myself, I got that itch to try that timer score again. This time, we crushed it first try. Yes! Oh my god! Oh, <sighs> Two more, and I don't have to worry about time in this one, just combo. And make it one more, as I first tried this one too. Did I get it? Did I get it? So the last one was actually quite challenging. The only thing I had to worry about was the first stage, as the boss stage doesn't count. No! Oh. What the hell? My lips are moving in slow motion, what the- Alright, single combo done. Oh my god. Oh, I already won. I won everything, I just have to win the, the boss. Here we go. Dodge that, jump up. Oh! Holy smokes! Collateral, yep. Jump up. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, I thought I died. Achievement unlocked. Damn it, I thought I'd 100% the game by now, but I left an achievement. No. That's right, one more achievement left and the game was complete. I had to earn 3 million score in one ridiculously fat, juicy combo. Like a Big Mac. Like a, like a Big Mac combo. The best stage for me to do this on was the finals in the base campaign, as it had the highest amount of enemies to build your combo meter off of. The idea for it was simple. 
constantly be doing high scoring tricks, build my combo as normal, and also collect every combo token, as it will add to my combo count, giving me a higher end score. The rest here was history. Whoa, that was scary. <gasps> oh my god, that was even scarier. Did I get it? That was a 3.1er, wasn't it? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah! 3.3 million? That's literally it. That's it. That was the 100% for episode 2's hat game, Roller Drone. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, you know what to do. Subway scribe? It helps. I'm actually hoping to get two videos out this week, one of them being a little bit different from usual, but they're both on games that were just released, so get pumped! Thanks, and see you in the next one.